Do you dare to set out into the airy world of the dead? In a world where the deceased seems so alive that it takes your breath away. Today, we're going to show you the eight most spectacular mummy finds of all time. These century-old corpses are so perfectly preserved that we fear they will awaken at any moment and descend upon us with their dead, cold hands. While some mummies even still have blood in their bodies, one thing is for sure, they will make your blood run cold. Xin Zui When medical experts performed a post-mortem on a corpse in the early 1970s, they were taken aback. The joints and the skin on the body were flexible and elastic. The internal organs presented themselves in excellent condition, and there was still blood in the veins. All in all, it seemed as if the deceased had passed from life only recently. In reality, however, the death of the Chinese noblewoman Zheng Zhuo had occurred over 2,000 years ago. Due to the amazing degree of preservation, this mummy is one of the best preserved in the world. After the burial chamber of the so-called Lady of Dai was rediscovered in 1971, experts immediately set to work to reconstruct the circumstances of the life and death of the noblewoman from the Han Dynasty. When Zi Zui died around 160 BC, she weighed about 75 kilograms at a height of 1.4 meters. And it was precisely this overweight and poor nutrition that sealed the fate of the Chinese woman. The autopsy revealed that her coronary arteries were severely constricted. The researchers also discovered gallstones and tapeworms in her body. A herniated disc, in turn, had caused Zin Zui to be severely limited in her movement. Shortly before she died at the age of about 50, she had once again eaten food that was difficult to digest. As a result, a gallstone came loose, which got stuck in the bile duct and caused hellish pain. The already sick heart could no longer withstand the Sonoma strain, so Zin Zui closed her eyes for all time. Subsequently, the noble woman was buried with all her possible honors. Laid to rest in a tomb shaped like an inverted pyramid, Xin Zhuai could not complain about the lack of substance on her journey to the afterlife. More than two-thirds of the 1,000 grave goods were used to feed her. The fact that the body resisted the gnawing ravages of time is probably thanks to the four lacquered coffins and the wooden paneling in which the corpse was placed at the time. In addition, the experts identified an unknown liquid in the innermost coffin, which may also have counteracted decomposition. Toland Man Eyelids, forehead wrinkles, and beard stubble. If you take a look at the perfectly preserved face of Toland Man, you might think he's just taking a quick nap. Reality, however, paints a somewhat different picture. Discovered in 1950 in a high moor in Denmark, radiocarbon dating revealed that he had already passed from life between the years 405 and 308 BC. Very probably we have to do here with a human sacrifice which was killed in the context of a spiritual ceremony. This is supported not only by the stomach contents, which are composed of 40 different plant seeds, some of which are rare, but also by the noose that the Tolan man still wears around his neck. So there is no question that he was hanged at that time, and since he was bedded in a peaceful sleeping position in the bog after his death, it is unlikely that he fell victim to enemies. Possibly he was killed to thank the gods for the peat, or to ask them for the dawn of spring. Rosalia Lombardo Rosalia Lombardo was not even two years old, so the Italian girl succumbed to the Spanish flu two weeks before her second birthday. However, the child's body, which has since rested in the Capuchin Crypt in Palermo, by no means looks as if Rosalia had died over 100 years ago. The fact that the girl is one of the best preserved mummies in the world today is due, on the one hand, to the special microclimate that prevails in the crypt. On the other hand, Rosalia's father, Mario, commissioned the chemist, Alfredo Salafia, to preserve the body of his beloved daughter, a task that the embalming specialist mastered with flying colors. The little girl's flawless face looks as if she was sleeping peacefully. The Children of Lululeco It is March 16, 1999, when a team of archaeologists led by Johann Reinhardt makes a gruesome discovery at the summit of Lululeco. The researchers recovered three lifeless children's bodies on the volcano, which lies on the border between Argentina and Chile. 
Soon after, it was determined that the little ones died during a sacred Inca ritual held around the year 1500. After receiving intoxicating substances such as alcohol and coca, the children were placed in a small chamber, 1.5 meters deep, and left to die. Since their discovery, the mummies have been known as La Donacella, La Niña del Rio, and El Nino. La Donacella, also known as the Girl of Lululeco, was about 15 years old at the time of her death. She had elaborately braided hair and wore a headdress redecorated with feathers. Historians suggest that she was an Akala during her lifetime. These so-called sun virgins were chosen and consecrated at the age of 10 to live henceforth with other women and girls who would become royal wives, priestesses, or human offerings. The sacrifices were aimed at pleasing the gods and bringing health, favorable weather, and abundant harvest to the people. While La Donacella apparently fell asleep peacefully, El Nino went through agonizing death throes. The boy, who was about seven years old, was the only one of the three children to be tied up, resulting in several broken ribs and a dislocated pelvis. As vomit and blood were found on his clothes, he apparently died under high stress. John Torrington As a Royal Navy stoker, John Torrington participated in the infamous Franklin Expedition in 1845. This research mission had the goal of searching for the ominous Northwest Passage, a sea route that would make it possible to circumnavigate North Africa. But just like his other 128 comrades, John was never to return home. He died first and was buried on Beachley Island after his death on January 1, 1846. Then, in 1984, forensic anthropologist Owen Beatty arranged for the body to be exhumed to determine the exact cause of death. Soon after, however, the researcher was presented with an extremely disturbing sight. John's face had a grotesque grin etched on it. The eerie image of the body preserved by the icy tundra went around the world from then on and served, among other things, as an inspiration for the Iron Maiden song, Stranger in a Strange Land. Away from the pop culture waves John's body made, scientists found that he succumbed to pneumonia that had been aggravated by lead poisoning. Dashi Dorsko, Itaglo. If one follows the statements of his followers, Dashi Dorsho Itaglo died in 1927 in the Lotus Seat. Previously, the head of the Buddhists of the Autonomous Republic of Boratia had arranged to be buried in just that position. In addition, he decreed in his will that his body should be exhumed at intervals of several years. No sooner said than done. When viewers examined Itaglo's body in 1955 and 1973, they were amazed to discover that it showed no signs of decomposition, a fact that still held true in September 2002. Thus, the official examination concluded that the body was in the condition of someone who had died only 36 hours. While the skin and the joints were still elastic and all muscles and organs were present, even the blood in the veins was still fluid. However, it is unclear what the true background of the impressive state of preservation is. It is true that Itaglov's body was covered with salt and buried in a coffin made of cedar wood. However, it is considered likely that other factors played a role in the mummification. Since the Buddhist monks categorically refuse further analysis, the excellent condition remains a mystery. Rai During her lifetime, Rai devoted herself to a very special task, she took care of the ancient Egyptian king's daughter, Amos Neferati, as a wet nurse. Many hundreds of years later, when the age of the pharaohs had long since faded, her body was to be rediscovered in an illegal mummy hiding place. Scientifically examined in 1909, Egyptologist Grafton Elliott Smith determined that we are dealing with one of the most remarkable examples of Egyptian embalming art. Furthermore, we know that Rai, who was 1.5 meters tall, was 30 to 40 years old at the time of her death, and also suffered from arteriosclerosis. Today, the mummy is kept in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Elmer McCurdy For nearly 60 years, Elmer McCurdy went big. He visited countless exhibitions and dazzling fairs, and even starred in the TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man. The only problem? He was long gone from life during his adventures. The story of his corpse is so bizarre and disturbing that we can really only shake our heads. But let's take it one step at a time. In the course of his criminal career, 
Elmer participated in a number of train and bank robberies. After a failed foray, he was shot and killed on October 7, 1911, at the age of 31. The body was then taken to a mortician in Pawhuska, Oklahoma. But since no relative of the dead man contacted him, he decided to turn the body into a macabre exhibit. One mummification, using an arsenial solution later, Elmer graced the mortician's living room for the next five years. Generous as he was, he allowed many onlookers to marvel at the corpse up close for the price of five cents. A peculiar cult developed in the process, with visitors putting coins in the dead man's mouth. In 1916, Elmer's relatives finally came to demand the release of the corpse. With the not insignificant restriction that these were in fact not his relatives at all, but deceitful showmen who wanted to present Elmer in the context of an exhibition. What followed was an almost 60-year odyssey that took the preserved body to countless shows, fairs, cinemas, and museums. The sheer unbelievable. In the 1960s, people had simply forgotten that it was a real person. The corpse was passed around so often and so thoughtlessly that it was eventually mistaken for a common mannequin. It was not until a member of a film crew accidentally broke off an arm of the mannequin in 1976 and human bones were revealed that the true identity of the exhibit was to be reconstructed. During the medical examination, the expert found a coin and a museum ticket in the mouth of the corpse, which helped identify the dead man. On April 22, 1977, Elmer was finally buried after all. To prevent the bizarre story from repeating itself, his coffin was sealed with a thick layer of concrete as a precaution. And now we are interested in your opinion. Which mummy fascinated you the most with its story? We are curious about your comments. Feel free to press the like and subscribe button to never miss on one of our videos. And with that, thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.